How's it going? I'm Michael and this is Budget Bills. My dad and I bring rusty, crusty old cars back to life. What's happening, Budget Builders? And welcome back to the channel. It's time to jump back into this Porsche. We'll notice we had the fenders pulled back off of this car and that's because I want to start focusing on some of the body work because we really are getting to that point and the stages where it's going to start being time to do body work and getting this thing prepped to paint. Especially once we get into the back area, starting to do those quarters and everything. I don't know if y'all be able to tell, hopefully not. Uh, dropping this camera enough finally killed the mic that, that I was using on it. And so we are going micless today. Hopefully the sound sounds okay and hopefully you'll be able to hear me. I need to order another one, maybe a whole new camera set up to do a little bit better filming but first thing i want to start on is our front area here obviously like i had said before if you can't tell there are like seven layers of paint it is ridiculous so i want to go ahead these little washer shooter things off and then i'm going to take my paint scraper and start scraping away some paint and then we'll go ahead and grab the sander and start getting this front area sand it off probably end up going down to bare metal or at least down to the original paint so we have a nice surface to work off of because the paint jobs that were on this car just really were snot i mean they are pure crap and they just don't stick very well and as you can see them just chipping off so let's go ahead and get this cleaned up now obviously i'm trying just down to to get down to that bottom layer of paint because I do not want to be gouging the metal with this sharp little blade. All right, so what I'm using here is this air, or is this, all right, so what I'm using here is this pneumatic angle die grinder with a medium grit something or another cleaning wheel hobbin fluber. And it's just abrasive enough to knock all the paint off but not dig down into the metal, kind of just polishes it. And so what, what I really want to do is, I know I wasn't originally going to go this crazy with the car, but now that I'm starting to do it, I want a nice paint job on this car. If we're going to paint it, it's going to be nice. And the only way to do that, because of how ugly the paint is on this car, is take it all off down to metal. And so that's what we're going to have to do. And then obviously we'll have to block it and everything. and. And this is my first time doing any kind of major body work like this, so hopefully this car comes out nice and, and I want it to look really good. You see where I'm cleaning it up? And these how nasty this paint job is. And so that's what we're trying to take care of on this gal. So as you can see here, Brad's gone ahead and got pretty much everything stripped. Thankfully, everything looks pretty nice and straight other than the corners right here. Like maybe at some point in time, the hood, the hood, the lid, the whatever thing up here came up, put a couple matching dents on either side. There was a little bit of, of a buckle on that end, but I was able to straighten it out. And it actually came out pretty darn good. So, so far everything there's looking pretty good. All right. So now it's time to consider these. Now, you've seen how bad the rear flares and quarters are on this car. They're super solid, which stinks. But this side's the pretty side. The other side was super crunched. And it's repairable, don't get me wrong. But if I need to do work to it anyways, these are fairly 
I don't know if it, you'd say simple, but these aren't terrible to install, and I'd like to give it a little bit of a rear hip. You know, being a Porsche, these have pretty lines. They have pretty lines when they're straight cars, but they have pretty lines when they have a little bit of a hip. Now, these are just a little bit later Carrera rear original rear flares, so it's not like we're going with anything big or crazy. We're not going crazy wide or anything. These are just a little bit more subtle and just a little bit wider and it's going to be just enough for us to keep our original wheels which will make it look really nice on this car and I think these are going to come out really great so it's time to go ahead and start getting around there. First thing I want to do is it's kind of a pain in the butt by yourself. <laughs> I want to get this thing lined up really nicely. Um, some people make it out like there's a science to it. I'm just going to get them lined up, get all the lines really great. I'm going to measure the inside depth to make sure our depth is here, is the same, and come down and make sure it's the same there. And then basically as long as all of our lines line up just right, I think it'll look really good on there and they'll be pretty nice and even side to side. Alright, now this is kind of more difficult on this side because I've got the oil tank here which needs to come out. And I'm lining that up just right, trying my best not to let it tuck down because then it'll drop it too low. I just want this groove right here, all around the top side, nice and flush. And at that point, we're going to drill some holes. I'm just using these screws that I had. Later in the garage. few extra little holes to fill in is well worth having this thing just right. Nice thing is this one goes up and just about completely covers this crinkle right here. I will have to massage it just a little bit for just the right fit when it comes time. Alright, so viewer discretion is advised. It's about to get cringy. So I measured, measured, and re-measured, and she is pretty much spot on. I used to get worked up over drilling a couple small holes in a back of a boat for a transducer. I'm kind of freaking out about cutting the whole back end off of a Porsche 911. Now, given it's a pretty rough old Porsche 911, this is still sketchy, but full send. <laughs> uh, okay, I'm shaking y'all. We got this, we got this. It's just a car, it's just some metal. And just weld it back together. All right, I'm gonna have to pull this oil tank to make this happen. We're gonna end up destroying something. <laughs> All right, so the oil tank's out. Kind of a pain in the butt. But once you know what you gotta do, it's not too bad. Uh, you gotta pull, there's a little bracket that comes down right here that you gotta take a, there's a lock washer and then a nut off. And then two 14 millimeter bolts nuts and then you just go wiggle and a jiggle and it finally falls out of there and hits the ground and makes a huge mess hey really quick what do y'all think of that new intro here lately a friend of mine cody's been helping me out with some with some stuff on the channel some editing skills and everything but kind of working me through it and all he does budget repairs rebuilds and flips kind of like we do be sure y'all go check out his channel show him some love i'll put a link to it right here it's broke premiere tell him that i sent you over Pretty sweet little tool, even for just being a Harbor Freight Special. Just 
just a little uh, body saw. It's so dang hot out here. This I'm gonna try my best not to get anything in my eyes, but it's so hot, it's so foggy, I can't see anything. are only one time use because this thing burn up already <laughs> all right so we're like titty caca again thought we had it fixed it, it really hasn't leaked in here in months and uh, so it surprised us this morning after a heavy storm it's pretty wet in here which sucks so it's just having the time and money to get out there and, and dig all the way around and French drain the whole thing. But that's what we got to do because it really sucks when it's wet here. But went ahead and grabbed a new saw. If it doesn't work. We put this in too. And dad's off work today, so that'll be nice to have a little help. <laughs> Here we go. Huh? No, that sucks. Nothing? All right, so I'm gonna try to do this with this without making a complete mess. Because I'm not running it back out to Harbor Freight right now. I probably should have bought a nicer one, but sometimes it's hard to afford stuff. Oh well. We got this. All right, test number 5,682. Here we go. Maybe I'm supposed to oil it before I try to use it. That sounds freaking weird. Okay. Full send. Let's go. Just a little bit of this dent left right here. I'm gonna get my pretty heavy, I don't know, watch body guys. This thing and this thing, which is a hammer, can stretch this metal back into shape. Pretty easy. Real thin metal on the sides of these cars. <laughs> All right, now it's time to jump in and clean the fender just the same. Fender, flare, quarter, whatever it is, you know, this thing. Yeah, you probably see my goofy mask. I customized it. This is the Harbor Freight Special because you can't find these anywhere. And Y'all fuss if I don't wear one, which is understandable because I can't breathe for the next three days. So I did get this one, and it had the goofy strap thing on the head that didn't really work. So I cut that off and made it where I like it a little better. And it works. And I can breathe the next few days afterwards. What you doing? I have no clue. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so we've gone ahead and test fit everything. I did grab our tape measure and I measured all of our lines up and down, side to side. Made sure everything was just about similar to the other side. It's extremely close. Uh, obviously not going to be dead on perfect, but you're not going to be able to tell unless you get out here with a daggum 
pair of calipers or something trying to figure it out. I mean, it's really, really stinking close. And so I'm really pleased with how it is. Now it's time to start tacking this thing in. And what we're gonna do is I'm gonna start from probably the bottom of either side, and then we will slowly work our way up and we're gonna keep a nice gap because we don't wanna create central, we don't want, how do you, how would you word that? You don't wanna have too much heat in one spot because we don't wanna cause any warping in the metal. These aren't very thick quarters, um, which a lot of body panels aren't. And so you want, we want to just be careful. We're going to go ahead and get everything tacked in. We'll remeasure everything, make sure there's nothing we need to work around with at all. And then at that point, I can slowly start coming through and tacking, 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 and then filling it all in, you know, taking our time in between and everything just so we don't create too much heat. And we'll go ahead and start with that. wonder how long we didn't have that on. couldn't be happier i'm pretty pretty pleased with how it turned out now it's time like i said just to go around and start filling all this mess in got about 4,692 spot welds around here. She's one solid piece of a car again. And I'm pretty happy with everything, how everything came out. Just very slowly back and forth, back and forth, trying to keep the heat dispersed where we don't get any kind of warping or anything. And I'm pretty pleased with the lines on it all the way up and all the way down. So I think it'll do really well. So now it's time to go. I'm sure there's a couple spots we'll have to fill in here and there, but it's time to go ahead and we'll get everything cleaned up. They will take like your little angle die grinder and take a cutoff wheel to begin with. And just so you don't create too much heat, but you get a lot of surface, a lot of metal removed. This thing's got <laughs> it's so, so much humidity in the tank because of how hot it is today or moist whatever it is moist I got pretty mild. <laughs> so you just take that and we're gonna get it all knocked down and then i'll get some kind of a finishing wheel and we'll finish it up make it nice and pretty you punched me you can't punch me <laughs>
All right, well, here she is, fully attached. Hopefully I don't sound weird. I had to go to the dentist this morning. I haven't had a cavity in forever. I don't know if I've ever had a cavity, but apparently how my tooth is made, it like for some reason had like a little divot and just got some, just got a cavity in there just because of how a tooth is made, not because of my hygiene, but the, my half of my mouth is kind of done right now. But it's looking, I'm really pleased with how everything came out. It looks pretty. <laughs> I can't even talk. Everything looks pretty. They got the pit size, put my leg in, but stiff. If you want to take everything out, it looks pretty good. Got to film some of the. <clears throat> Sorry. Obviously, still have to do a little bit of cleanup, but for the most part, everything's looking really good. <laughs> everything's. All the lines are looking really good and we didn't get too much heat anywhere. So there's not a bunch of warbles or anything. But the biggest thing is we still have to get this whole quarter cleaned off. That's going to take a lot of time. And then once we do that, we can clean this up a little bit. And then obviously we'll have to put just a little bit of filler in there just to clean that edge up to a certain extent. Uh, but overall, I'm really pleased with how it came out and I hope you guys are too. Let's go ahead and grab our little die grinder and work on knocking some of this paint off. So you can see this car had a little bit of a boo-boo. Golly, I can't even talk. And they had drill, done the old-fashioned drill some holes and yank her back out. Uh, thankfully, just with some beating around with the dollies and the hammer, it's pretty freaking close. You know, we've got a few little, few little divots here and there. I might try to work with a little bit more, but I want to go ahead and... I want to go ahead and weld in and fill these. You did. You can see a little bit of surface rust and everything that was actually underneath the paint, because when you do this old school style bodywork and stuff, any kind of moisture that is allowed to get up in there, even soaking into the bondo, will cause for that rust up underneath the paint, and that's what's giving us the peeling and the chipping and the the crappy paint job. So I want to get all the rust knocked down. I want to get all of this filled in and cleaned up. I will try to get it just a little bit better, but it's pretty close, especially compared to how much you could see it had a good quarter inch of Bondo in some spots. And now we can pretty much just give it a nice little layer when we get done with everything. So I'm pretty pleased with how that came out. I'm going to go ahead and throw a couple tack welds in, get her spotted up and everything. We'll clean it up and keep on moving. All right, well, there's a repaired corner using what we had there. I'm pretty pleased with how everything came out. Obviously, it's got a little bit of warble here and there, but some blocks, some filler, and some blocking will fix that up. And it's gonna be a very thin layer instead of having that big, thick, that big thick chunk of bondo back here. At least it was high quality stuff, but still, I want, like I said before, I want to try to do this car right. So let's go ahead and finish getting this rear quarter cleaned up. Alright, 
Well, we've got a complete car again. We've got both rear flares on both sides. I mean, realistically, as far as major body work goes, everything's done. We've got our flares on. Most of the rust repair has been taken care of. There's a few little spots that we're going to need to take, need to be able to go over. But for the most part, the, br the brunt work of this car, as far as body-wise goes, has been done. And I'm really pleased with the way it kind of came out. You see, I put that filler panel on there, and our lines line up really nicely. So I'm really happy with how everything's flowing here. The wheels look good in there. The depth is nice. And so I feel like as far as major things go with this car, we've really pushed it to a good point where we can just keep on going through and blast through this bodywork, get it done, and hopefully here soon be able to paint this car. I am going to try to get a hold of a couple local body shops to see if I can work with someone on possibly using a paint booth, renting a paint booth or something. I would do it around here, but I don't want to get a bunch of trash or anything in the car, and I think it would be worth our time and our effort after doing all of this to paint it in a booth. That is going to wrap it up for this episode. I really hope you guys enjoyed, and you're pleased with how everything looks here as far as the flares and all go. Thankfully, we were able to sell that Jetta, and that's actually what paid for those rear flares. We were able to buy them online locally, actually out of Columbia, only a few hour drive. And it gave $300 for, the, for both sides, $350 for both sides. I think that was a really good deal, even being used, because they are so strong. They came out really nice on there, versus spending, you know, three to $700 a piece per side for new ones. And, you know, you're not, you're not sure you're going to get that same quality part as you are an original flare. As always, thank you so much for the positive love and support we've had so far on this channel. Hope everyone's doing safe out there, especially during these hurricanes and everything. We're keeping you all in our thoughts and prayers. Peace out, and catch you later, Tater.